Today on The Secret Sits, we are going to discuss July 15th, 1976, a day that the community of Chowchilla, California would like to forget. However, it is a piece of the town's history. On this day, in this town, a crime was committed that transfixed the entire nation and affected many people in the small farming community. Today, we are going to discuss the Chowchilla school bus kidnapping. It was a hot July day, and it was the next to the last day of summer school at Dairyland Unified. A big yellow school bus is driving down the country roads with their driver, Ed Ray, at the wheel. Ed Ray was a farmer and born and raised in Chowchilla. He knew all of the children, and some of them were even the grandchildren of his own classmates. All of the kids on the bus ranged in age from 5 to 14. The youngest was Monica Ardery, and the oldest was Mike Marshall, who was the son of a rodeo cowboy. About 4 p.m. on Thursday, July 15, 1976, Ed was driving the 26 students home from a summer class trip to the Chowchilla Fairground swimming pool when a van blocked the road ahead of the bus. Ray saw the white van stopped in the road. He slowed down to see if someone had engine trouble. Just then, three gunmen jumped out of the van with pantyhose over their heads and commandeered the bus. One of the youngest girls, Monica, confused by the pantyhose on their heads with the leg parts hanging down, asked if the kidnapper was the Easter Bunny. They drove the bus into a dry canal where another van was waiting. The kidnappers hid the bus in the Berinda Slough, a shallow branch of the Chochilla River. The children and Ray were moved into the back of two white vans. Eerily, both vans' back windows were painted solid black, and their interiors had been reinforced with paneling. The scared children and Ed were then driven for 11 agonizing hours in the vans, with no water and no bathroom stops. Some of the smaller children vomited from motion sickness, all while the older children sang songs in an attempt to cheer up their smaller comrades. They sang Boogie Nights, Love Will Keep Us Together, and If You're Happy and You Know It, Clap Your Hands, although they changed the words to If You're Sad and You Know It. Around 3.30 a.m., the convoy arrived at the Livermore Quarry, 100 miles from Chochilla. The kidnappers opened the van Ed was riding in and pulled him out of the van leaving the children by themselves. They then proceeded to do this to each child. One child would be pulled out of the van by themselves, and the door to the van would be slammed shut. The final two children left in the vans were Michael and Monica, the oldest and youngest of the children. And at this point, they had no idea what was happening outside of this van. For all they knew, as each person was pulled out, they were being executed. So Michael, trying to be the protector, moves Monica behind him so the kidnappers had to take him first. And when they came for Michael, he had to rip Monica's hand away from him so that he could leave the van. As he departed, he turned to Monica and told her not to worry and that everything would be okay. The kidnappers forced Ed and the children to climb down a rickety ladder into a moving truck, which they had buried in the ground a couple of months before the kidnapping had taken place. They had stocked the truck with a small amount of food and water and some mattresses. Just before each victim was forced to crawl down into the moving truck, the kidnappers made each of them give their name, age, address, and a small piece of clothing. One wall of the truck was stacked with mattresses and the containers of water. They also left enough bread and peanut butter 
for each kid to have one sandwich, and they left several cardboard boxes with holes cut in them to be used as makeshift toilets. The truck was excruciatingly stuffy, with only two air tubes connected to the outside providing usable air. After Ed and all of the children were settled into the moving truck, the three kidnappers started throwing dirt down onto the roof of the buried truck. The children screamed and one of them fainted. They all knew that they were being buried alive. Ray tried his best to soothe the kids, but he too was weeping. Ed was afraid that the roof was going to cave in and that it would bury and suffocate all of them. Ten-year-old Correjo Lavendero said, There were times we all thought we were dying. I promised God that if I survived this, I would be the best little girl. I would be the best little girl my whole entire life. Michael then said that he wasn't going to die without at least trying to get out. Ray, Michael, and the older boys stacked the mattresses in the center of the truck, climbed on top of them, and used wooden slats to dislodge a steel plate on the roof of the truck, which covered the hole that they had crawled through to get into the truck. The kids and Ray poured water over their heads to fight off the impending heat exhaustion, and they kept pushing and pushing at the metal plate until they were finally able to move it. Unbeknownst to the captives, the kidnappers had also placed two 100-pound industrial batteries on top of the metal plate. They worked on moving the metal plate and the batteries for hours, until finally, after shifting the metal plate and then getting the batteries off, the children and Ray were able to climb out of the hole. It had now been 16 long hours since they had been buried and 27 hours since they had been kidnapped. Michael got out of the roof first and saw that the kidnappers had placed a wooden box around the entrance to the top of the truck. But that wooden box was also surrounded by dirt and rock. So Michael had to tunnel out of the dirt to finally reach daylight. One by one, the kids came out of the hole. The group emerged and after looking at their surroundings, realized they were at a working rock quarry. So the entire group of 26 children and Ed Ray started walking to the quarry's guard shack near the Shadow Cliffs East Bay Regional Park. The guard sees the children and says to them, the world's been looking for you. The police were called and the group was loaded up and taken to the local jail so they could be photographed, interviewed, and they were fed sodas and apples. The quarry owner's son, 24-year-old Frederick Newhall Woods IV, quickly came under suspicion as one of the people who had keys to the quarry and enough access to have buried the moving truck there. He and two of his friends, brothers James and Richard Schoenfeld, aged 24 and 22 respectively, had previously been convicted of Grand Theft Auto, for which they had been sentenced to probation. A warrant was executed on the estate of Wood's father, and there police recovered one of the guns used in the kidnapping, as well as a draft of a ransom note. But the three men had fled. Woods was caught two weeks after the kidnapping in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. James Schoenfeld had been captured earlier the same day in Menlo Park, California, while Richard Schoenfeld had voluntarily turned himself in to authorities eight days after the kidnapping. The kidnappers had been unable to call in their intended ransom demand of $5 million dollars because telephone lines to the Chowchilla Police Department were tied up by media calls and families searching for their children. 
They went to sleep at some point on Friday the 16th and woke late that night to television news reports informing them that the victims had freed themselves and were safe. James Schoenfeld later stated that despite coming from wealthy families, both he and Woods were deeply in debt. We needed multiple victims to get multiple millions, and we picked children because children are precious. The state would be willing to pay ransom for them, and they don't fight back. They're vulnerable, and they will mine. Some details of the crime corresponded to details in The Day the Children Vanished, a story by Hugh Pentecost that was published in Alfred Hitchcock's Daring Detectives in 1969. A copy of this book was in the Chowchilla Public Library, and police theorized that it had possibly inspired the kidnappers. All three perpetrators pleaded guilty to kidnapping for ransom and robbery but they refused to plead guilty to infliction of bodily harm. As a conviction on that count, in conjunction with the kidnapping charge, carried a mandatory sentence of life in prison without the possibility of parole. They were tried on the bodily harm charge, found guilty, and given the mandatory sentence, but their convictions were overturned by an appellate court which found that physical injuries sustained by the children, mostly just cuts and bruises, did not meet the standard for bodily harm under the law. They were re-sentenced to life with the possibility of parole. Richard Schoenfeld was released in 2012, and James Schoenfeld was paroled on August 7, 2015. In October 2019, Frederick Woods was denied parole for the 19th time. His next parole hearing was set for 2024. Over the years, reasons given for the denials have included his continued minimalization of his crime, as well as disciplinary infractions for possessions of contraband, pornography, and cell phones while in jail. In 2016, a workers' compensation lawsuit filed against Woods also revealed that he had been running several businesses, including a gold mine and a car dealership, from behind bars without notifying prison authorities as required. The heir to two wealthy California families, the Newhalls and the Woods, he inherited a trust fund from his parents that was described in one court filing as being worth $100 million, although Wood's lawyer disputed that amount. He has married three times while in prison and has purchased a mansion about 30 minutes away from the prison. Frank Edward Ray, or Ed, received a California School Employees Association citation for outstanding community service before he passed away on May 17, 2012, he was visited by many of the school children he had helped save. Every February 26th has been declared Edward Ray Day in Chowchilla. A study found that the kidnapped children suffered from panic attacks, nightmares involving kidnappings and death, and personality changes. Many developed fears of such things as cars, the dark, the wind, the kitchen, mice, dogs, and hippies. And one shot a Japanese tourist with a BB gun when the tourist's car broke down in front of his home. Many of the children continued to report symptoms of trauma at least 25 years after the kidnapping, including substance abuse and depression and a number have been imprisoned for doing something controlling to somebody else. What was learned from the after-effects suffered by the kidnapped children has guided the treatment of young victims of trauma since the kidnapping. In 2016, the 25 surviving kidnapped children settled a lawsuit they had filed against their kidnappers. The money they received 
was paid out of Frederick Wood's trust fund, and although the exact settlement amount was not disclosed, one survivor stated that they have each received enough to pay for some serious therapy, but not enough for a house. Larry Park, who was six years old at the time of the kidnapping, met with all three men while in prison and forgave them for the kidnapping. All of the kids were given a trip to Disneyland, including Ed Ray, and the entire town created the Ed Ray and Children's Day with a huge celebration which included a parade with Ed and all of the children riding on floats. In 1976, child therapy was not very advanced, and the doctors just did not know how to treat these kids for the trauma that they had endured. They all have some forms of PTSD brought on by the kidnapping and being buried alive. So now we know that everyone in this week's story made it out alive. But their lives have been and will always be marred by this harrowing ordeal. And let this be a reminder to us all that if you know a grown adult who still has to sleep with the light on, maybe you don't know their trauma and their triggers. So be kind, be compassionate, and we will see you again next week. I'm John Dodson, and this has been The Secret Sits. Audio engineering by Gabriel Dodson. Original artwork provided by Tony Lay.